anyway, so what I was doing was I was looking through this feed. And it's called Aries Abandoned, but if you go here, it's just got all these really interesting pictures, literally of places that have been abandoned around the world, right? And it's not just a visual thing. If you go through here, I mean, it's really interesting stuff. Look at this one. That's crazy. That's really cool. Yeah, there's a ton of cool stuff in here. Look at this. And what I love about it is you could come in here and just go, I'm just going to use this as a starting point and jump off and, you know, because this stuff already looks like fantasy stuff or something. And the thing is, I get a lot of uh, students that go, I want to do this post-apocalyptic world or whatever. And then you look at their stuff and you're like, did you even look at any buildings and how things decay? Did you look at that? No. It's like, it looks made up, dude. Go look it up, right? And this is just full of, at first I was going, this would be great Star Wars reference, but it is the abandoned Star Wars um, set in the Tunisian desert. Look at this one. I mean, that's how things decay, okay? There was one in here I wanted to show you guys. Look at this one. This one's a teenage girl's bedroom abandoned in the mid 80s. So it just got abandoned, it's just sitting there like it was when the kid left it. Just super trippy to me. Look at this one. And then if you read up here, this train's been abandoned since T.E. Lawrence, who's the subject of uh, 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 Lawrence of Arabia. So this has been sitting here since he attacked this uh, train you know, 100 years ago, okay? Look at this one. It's a fishing village that got taken back over by nature. It was abandoned. This one's really cool. You know, why is that water so green? It's probably got a bunch of algae in it or something, but it's just, it gives me an excuse to make the water that green. There's one under, an under uh, submerged city. There's one in here I really wanted you guys to see. This is just trippy looking period. Underwater restaurant that was abandoned. This one. I mean, I have no idea what the story is for this, but it's just this cave that's full of like junk and old cars and stuff. It just makes my brain start to want to write a narrative to that, okay? And plus it's just cool reference. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, look at this one. You want to know what the uh, Millennium Falcon would look like if it was sitting in a forest decaying for 100 years? It looks like that. Yeah. That's what I exactly thought and I had in mind when you said that. I mean, it's, it looks like it's one of those kind of cockpits. I mean, if you go to March Field and you look at the, the gunner bubble underneath the Flying Fortress, it's the Millennium Falcon. You know, it's tiny, but it's like they just made it bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. But same thing here. It looks like that. But if you were like, okay, what if they found this 25 years later sitting in a desert or whatever? And then you kind of get a good sense of how things decay, you know, so it looks more believable. I think there was one other one. I think this, this one's a California. I think that's the bridge to nowhere. If you look that up, you could hike to it. This one is cool. This one's really cool. I mean, look at that, man. Right? I could just start riffing on this and just come up with a whole new environment. This thing, I mean, this is awesome, some of this stuff. Look at this thing. There's that sand crawler from um, yeah, <laughs> Star Wars, right? And you don't know if these people saw these things, you know, if they saw the same things and went, oh, I can put treads on that. And you just, I mean, you, you got to get ideas from anywhere. Yeah. This one was cool. This one's a... Uh, a demon statue at an abandoned mausoleum in Poland. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. It's awesome that this stuff actually exists, too, by the way. You know, here's part of John's space station. 
or whatever he's drawing. On and on and on. Oh, this one I thought was super cool. Abandoned president's heads in a rural Virginia field. Like that doesn't look real, okay? But man, does that give me a lot of cool ideas. Anyway, look at that one. I can go through this all day, but I won't. Abandoned mall. By the way, there's an abandoned mall here in LA. A uh, guy named John Explorer. Uh, I'd have to find it. He did an episode on it. He snuck into it. Anyway, there's a bunch of this stuff. They're called areas abandoned. And if I were you, I'd be pulling a lot of this stuff. Um, um, just to keep in your, in your sort of scrap file for reference, okay? Don't just make stuff up. I mean, after you have a lot of experience, you can make stuff up, but don't just start making stuff up all the time. It starts to look kind of childish. Okay. All right, so on this uh, painting stuff, any broad questions? No? I guess, Mike, about mine, um, I'm trying to draw the trickling water down the, uh, down the rocks on yeah. the foreground. I think I'm, I don't think I quite have the texture right, but I just probably had to um, play around with more brushes, but uh, I got stuck between work, so I was trying to do it between breaks. <laughs> I just like to see progress. That's the main thing. Okay. Um, this is different lighting. The way I was lighting mine was sort of thinking it's sort of trickling over uh, and, you know, it's catching a lot of that blue light and then a little bit of highlight, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd probably look at, um, it feels like it just needs a, um, that it just needs I'd probably cut some of the edges of this a little bit so it's not so prominent. And then it feels like it just needs like a, a little hot point maybe to sort of define it a little bit. Yeah, probably for sure. So I'm going to take a regular brush. That's weird. Hang on. Um, yeah. mm. And maybe, I don't know. I'm on the wrong way. No. Really? Sometimes here. Okay. Yeah, so maybe like here. And what tends to happen when water hits rocks? You know, it kind of pools up on the top and then it sort of sort of lavas down the sides. Does that make sense? Like it finds yeah, its little channels, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would just go, okay, there are little channels. And, and then I'm kind of treating like a waterfall with that lip of the waterfall where it goes over. I might highlight that lip, right? Oh yeah, huh. that makes sense. So I might just take these parts here where it's, you know, turning. And highlighting them a bit. And see how it's starting to get that feel a little bit? Yeah. And then I'm going to obliterate some of it. I don't want everything. I tend to obliterate at, uh, ends, like transition. And I got this brush on a really small, it's really small the size of it. So, see that's starting to get a little more of that look? Yeah. And I wonder if I could even take some of this green in here. More green color. Feels like there'd be a little more right here. So I'm going to go a little. Because there's a flat surface here, so it might pull up a little there, too. Yeah. And then again, just put a little hotter spot in there. I like it to have that, like, splashes up and then rivets down, right? Mm hmm You know, just depends on what you want to do. 
Yeah. Like it might be able to put a little foam in there, maybe a little, right? Mm -hmm. Look real quick here. Can't find it. You can usually always find pictures like that. Let's see. A little bit here. See, there's the kind of foaminess, right? And then look, here's where it's doing what we just did right there you see that yeah i see it and then look it's real foamy here so where the um where the water initially hits it and gathers it'll get foamy and then it trickles off right mm -hmm. so that could be you know you might go you know you probably got a like a dry brushy kind of thing if you want to do that foamy thing and if i don't have one i make one right yeah because we're going to talk a little bit about um another little brush thing today and then i'll probably exit brush stuff and then we're going to enter something else um probably thursday okay okay because right now we've talked about brushes in general organizing them a little bit um stamp brushing then reactive brushes and then we're going to go over mixer brush today and another mixer brush thing tomorrow and uh and then i think we should have a pretty good handle on brushes right sounds good and uh, by the way, you guys, like the brush tools, I'm hoping you're seeing this. Part of the reason I spend a lot of time on brushes is because the brush tool tool set is really similar in almost everything you go to. If you go to the stamp tool, you know, you can soften the edges, harden the edges, bigger, smaller, you know, different types of takes on the, on all these brush, on all these, it turns all these tools into, they're basically brush tools. They just do, you know, stamp brushing or whatever but you sort of use the same tool set and you'll start to see how you can cross the ideas over across a lot of different tools. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, anything else? I like that that gives you a, um, a kick of blue in the foreground. Yeah. So it's popping that out of that, it's popping forward a little bit because you got this thing happening in the foreground, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, I might even, I don't know. I'm gonna put another, I'm gonna see if I can just put my, I've been having problems with this lately and I'm not exactly sure why. So sometimes you guys, you know, some tool that I go in to show you guys, um, it hasn't happened this term, but um, they might've changed it in 2020 and I gotta go back and go crap, I gotta refigure this out because I changed it a little bit, um, just so you know. But, um, what are we gonna see? Oh, I might take, put my brush on color. Let's see if it's gonna let me do this. I'm going to sample some of this. It's going pretty opaque. So I don't know why lately my, it's not letting me put my brush on color mode, which I think is weird. But I'm just going to do it over here in the layer. Let's see. Yeah, see, that's better. I don't know what's going on with that. I don't have time to figure it out right now. Um, you know, I might put a little of that shadow or that color from up there not that hard but again I'm gonna soften it up here a little bit and that's gonna get rid of a lot of it and just maybe give his top part of his feathers just a slight cool off that they're catching from above right mm -hmm. yeah and it's always just a matter of trying to get this stuff to um, feel like it's in the same environment like yeah you know mm -hmm. You know, so I could also take a light value up here, maybe. And you've already done a little of this, you know, a little of that, where he's catching a little bit of light up here. And see how he's starting to feel it more like he's in that, that lighting yeah. environment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really subtle. You know, what people do is they, and, and I mean, it's normal, you're learning, but, um, and you're not doing it, actually. But they'll, they'll just do a lot of screaming color everywhere, and it's like, you gotta, those things are going to attract the eye, and you got to, you know, manage where you want the eye to go and all that kind of stuff, right? 
Yeah, like the traditional class that I took with you, it's it it definitely helped with paint mixing yeah. and just finding that subtle color. So it's it's been it it helped a lot. It it I can see how now that that traditional media tra- translates really well to digital and vice and vice versa. Like yeah, what I want other. people to understand is that it's all part of to me anyway. It's all part of in my mindset. That's all of it's just part of your training and your training really, I've said this a million times is your fundamentals. You know what I mean? Um, to me, that's all I'm ever accessing is my fundamentals. You know, I don't really know when I think about it, you go, okay, you get more advanced in your painting skill and your drawing skill and all that kind of stuff. But when you stop and slow down and go, why isn't this working or, or what is working or whatever, as you're working through something, what do you go back to? value, contrast, Mm -hmm. color temperature, color, uh, shape language, um, uh, shape sizes in contrast to each other, line quality. I mean, whatever becomes advanced about it is just your use of those tools and those fundamental ideas. But you don't, I mean, you don't suddenly become accessing some other uh, tool set as you get more and more experience at this. You just get better at using your fundamentals. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And just like this, why do I know how water reacts over a rock, right? Because mm-hmm. I catalog it, I paint it, I draw it, you know, and I look at it and I go, how does that work? Because for me to be able to paint it, I want to not just paint it because it's in front of me. I want to learn from it. I want to go, oh, that's what happens when water hits those rocks. And if I'm sitting there painting it, I'm hyper studying it and it sticks in my brain and then I can pull it out of my head when I need it, right? Right. Um, over here... I might go back in now. Let's get a oily brush. Oh, to re- reintroduce the texture of the yeah, rock? Yeah, a little bit of this texture in here again. Yeah. Now, if I go pretty big, let's see. Wait, see, that's too big. I'm going to get this lighter value. And I'm going to pick up these colors because some of them are pretty good. Yeah, the dark colors are, can play into that. And then I'm just going to do this back and forth. You know, I'm letting the brush do the work, right? Right. I might even let it break that edge a little bit. I kind of like that. Oops, what happened? What did I just do? Oh, there it is. Again, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want the same thing everywhere. So maybe I'll come in here and go, you know, what is, I don't know, I might even use this. But let's get a little bit of, oops, I want some blue in here. Too much probably, but again, I might come in here and just break it up somehow. Just maybe get some some nice little textural shapes in there, right? This right. is up facing, so I might come back to this brush. That's weird. I might grab some of this and then again get rid of some of it, leave some of it. You know. And just start to trick out a little bit because it's close. It's close, so I can show some texture and stuff like that. So also, I like yeah. doing that too because I just like when I'm looking at paintings and stuff. What gets me, you know, that kind of thing when I'm looking at it, like those Rakowski or whoever, um, you know, and you sell that beautiful brushwork and texture in the foreground. And you go, oh man, that person knows how to paint. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Plus, it's just satisfying looking. I think. You know, and then I also might go in here and get a little bit of a really dark. That's purple. That's cool. You know, something dark in here. Maybe here and there. So it's too big. So I can, uh, you know, darken this foreground up. It might be, I'd probably do it on different layers so I could play around with it. Because I don't want it to overwhelm everything. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Right. And then I also really look at like how things suggest things to me. So, like, 
here is you know like here maybe it's right there looks like it might be you know, <laughs> this thing's like totally fighting me right now. Hang on. Okay. Right here feels like that might be a little um, outcropping of a rock, right? Okay. Like there. And then, then for oh, sure, okay. this feels like it's dropping down, sloping off like that. So, I, if I, and right here feels like a little bit of another little outcropping here mm, yeah i see that and i'm just letting it lead me and go okay i'm going to cool off the top i'm going to kind of just barely define that there's some facets on that rock right right because that's all a rock is, is some facets. Mm -hmm. even around one um you know stuff like that this up here i don't know what you're doing up here but i think it looks cool all up in here this stuff back here feels very industrial for some reason which is cool Thank you. I like this. This feels, I don't know if you ever looked at, um, you know, when you're driving down the road once in a while and you see those, um, I think they're like gravel factories or something. They just yeah. Have piles of stuff. Then they have stuff. That, that's kind of what I was thinking when I put those shapes in there because I love those like, shapes. You know, Seal have, Beach. Yeah. The place where I work, actually, they have a lot of industrial buildings. Seal Beach in, in like a lot of industrial and like the Navy buildings too. Mm -hmm. Like they stick out. Yeah, and they and, got that big water treatment plant with the big stack. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you ever get up close to that thing, because I've gone over there and drawn that or whatever, it's just got a ton of pipes and stuff. It's super cool. Then they light it up at night. Same thing with oil refineries. Oil refineries. Yeah. Fun to yes. go paint, you know? Like, you can sit there. I think what I'm going to do for my illustration class, I'm going to do some, uh, I'm getting ready for all that right now um, for all my fall stuff. But, um, I'm going to do some, some extended out. I did a workshop where it was sort of designing from life, and I'm going to extend that out and really start to get really elaborate with that, with working off of things, uh, you know, that exist, but turning into a lot of other things. That's probably why I was looking at all that um, abandoned area stuff, because I just look at that, and, man, that stuff just it gets your brain going into, like, shapes and narratives and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not a bad exercise to go in there and just use that stuff as a starting point like that cave with all the cars and everything in it, that just intrigues me because I go, why is that stuff in there? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That doesn't, you know, and then because you don't have the narrative, your brain starts to make a narrative. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which I think is really helpful just to flex your creative brain, you know, and plus just to have fun. You know what I mean? Okay, any other questions on this? I, I think it's interesting. I think the lighting's interesting. Yeah. I'm, it, it was mostly I just did thumbnails of all the different color lighting and I just decided to go with the sunrise slash sunset. So. Yeah, I think it's cool. Thank you. How are you doing um, the Saturday class this semester, Mike? Just the same way as we did it last semester? Um, yeah, more or less. I'm going to see... Um, I'm gonna try and, and yeah, um, it's good because I've already, because I do a lot of live videos anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of lucky that the, that class is sort of front loaded and then I did the landscape one last term. So I've kind of got the first part of the class pretty front loaded with stuff like literally on, on, on uh, location. But I'm gonna find out, and I don't know if the school's gonna go for this, if I just go, you know, can we go out to uh, uh, Brea Canyon and just stay, you know, social distance, wear masks, whatever. Can we do that if we're out in the open? And I, when I suggested mm -hmm. that to the dean, he was like, yeah, they might do that. But who knows? You know what I mean? Right. What I did find out last term is that you can do that class online. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was really worried about that. Um, and then... You know, again, I know I'm not saying this to blow smoke up anybody's ass, but it really depends on the um, the students you have. Like in this class this summer, we've had good students. Everybody's been here every day. You know, they're working, and, and everybody's has good questions, and it seems like everybody's engaged and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? 
So it really depends on that. Because I had a class yeah. before that, this class, and it wasn't that they were bad students. I think they just all came into this class thinking it was going to be, like I said, just a very simple, basic, um, let's make greeting cards or something kind of Photoshop class. And that's not what it is. And all the people in that class were um, not art majors. And a lot of them, I think, took it as an elective thinking it's just going to be super simple. And it's like, you know, so it just dwindled down to this really small class. But I mean, they were cool students. I mean, they actually did a pretty good job for people who had no background in this. But it's so much nicer. I'm what, and the reason I post a lot of stuff around this class is I'm trying to make sure that there's an awareness around what this class is with students. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I don't want them to think it's Dart 100. That's a different thing, you know? I feel like Dart 100 is much more geared to um, graphic designers and things like that, you know? Right. Okay, so I want to get through a brush thing today, so. Because I want to get on to our third thing. So, Noah, you started naming your, um, your naming conventions now following my naming convention? Where's Noah? I can see you there. Okay, he's not there. He has uh, mic issues. He's typing. Oh, okay. He says here. You, you guys always know this, and I don't know anything. I keep my chat up, like, like all the time, so that's how I see it. That's a good idea, actually. Well, okay. I just think it's funny you named it um, Terrible Progress, which is kind of funny. Which I, I don't agree with you. I don't think it's Terrible Progress. I mean, the only thing I see here mostly, you know. It's just color issues. By the way, uh, Noah, if you're having trouble with your mic, and you can get a really cheapo mic at a, like Best Buy or whatever, even like a lavalier mic or something like that. And they're like, I think they're like 12 to 20 bucks, uh, you know, and you could use that, okay? You know, so I, I unify some of this color. I don't know if the sunlight works. I just take that out. I'd probably tone this down to maybe desaturate it a little bit. If I just desaturate it, then it starts to feel a little more like it's picking up the color above it. And I could probably get little hints of that. You know, just get everything else laid in. I mean, you have these on color overlay, so you're getting that. When you start going to the sunlight, if you want to get more of that sunlight hitting it, uh, you might want to go on a, uh, uh, you know, build up to that and then start to hit like your opaque color, your opaque brush strokes. Does that make sense? Okay. And make sure this this reflective green here is reflecting this a little bit because that's kind of the way he's facing. He's facing, you know, those rocks right there. Does that make sense, Noah? Okay. And more to your point, Elan. Yeah, Mike. Uh, I'm having fun with playing with this stuff online. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's fun to like be challenged, you know, and go, can I do this? You know, can I do this? The one thing about it is like this coming term. And again, I'm not bitching about my workload. It's fine, but uh, it's going to be brutal because you have to do so much extra work for the online stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it's worth it at the end. Right. If you do end up doing some field trips, let me let me know because that I missed that I know, <laughs> last semester. <laughs> so and I found that killer place out in the desert. I don't know if anybody's gonna be willing to drive that far. It's pretty far, actually. I don't think it's I don't think it's all that far from the Arizona border, so it's probably like too far. But man, it was cool. 
I'm going to go back out there. I think I'm going to go out there and do a demo out there um, with, uh, with the new setup I have. So I, my Saturday class will be a combination of um, traditional, I'll still be doing traditional stuff too. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to try and get a setup here where I can switch over to a little lit section over here to the right of my, uh, my Cintiq and all that and be able to jump over and do spontaneous um, uh, traditional stuff and jump over to Cintiq and back and forth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think that'll be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Sheena. I'm here. What do you think? I think it's looking cool. Um, I think, yeah, I think he's doing better. I, I took your advice with um, learning how to cool like the rocks. I feel like it's a little bit um, more purple and blue, but I think it's, I think it's okay. I, I purple I, blue is fine. It's just, you're setting up your own lighting in this case, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, you know, you can go <clears throat> like you just keep blocking in the way you're doing it. And then, you know, maybe sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Then I'll put another, I'm always doing this, just put another layer and just trying stuff. You know, I might sample a little more of this warmth and maybe go. I don't know what brush I'll use for this. See, I can just warm up the tops of those because maybe they're catching some of this light from the windows. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. But see how it's really subtle? I don't want to overdo it. And then in these shadows, I might catch just a little bit of this orange light or whatever here, just to show a little texture in there, just kind of dance that idea around. I might come in here and this has got a hard edge right there, so I might just soften that edge a little. I like these strokes right there, so I'd probably leave that. So I want a, I want a combination of strokes. I don't want everything to be the same. Are you, okay. Um, does that look, I think it looks cool. I mean, it looks like you're getting it. Does it feel like it? I think so. I just think I just need to continue to dip myself into this uh, process. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to ask, like, as someone who's getting deeper into uh, taking graphic design classes, like, um, yes, um, I'm, I'm taking a typography class next semester. Um, I'm also asking, like, what are other good classes that uh, an ideal graphic designer would need to take? Have you taken sort of basic uh, design, um, whatever the basic intro graphic design stuff? All the, I'm a big believer in, t in, in taking your steps in the right order. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so far, um, I took like the drawing class with Ian and I also signed up for basic design for next semester. Oh, good, good. And I'm taking, I think, intro to digital art so I could touch up with my, with the basic classes too. So that's what I have so far. Okay. Um, and you have a, did you say you have an intro graphic design class in there? I took the graphic design one. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I really think it's a, uh, it's sort of like, okay, like an art center, the first half of your education, which is your eight terms at art center, mm -hmm. and the first four terms, which is half, you know, half your education is nothing but foundation, okay? So what you're doing is, is, you know, you're getting all your tools and your skills together to then make creative things that you know how to sort of execute and then you start talking more about the concept and all that stuff does that make sense okay so um start foundational and then branch out to conceptual yeah well when i say conceptual i mean like if you go into like let's you know you take in you take whatever the graphic design uh steps are basic design and whatever basic stuff you have to take you know this uh this is a foundational class um and then when you go into like Steven's advertising class or whatever, now it's about, okay, yes, I want to make a, a really beautiful execution of my idea, but it's going to be as much about the idea as it is about that execution. Does that make sense? Yeah. They should, they should live together. Uh, you tend to, when you're younger or whatever, when you're new to this stuff, you go, I see this all the time where you go, okay, here's, a, here's an idea or here's an editorial piece you're going to do. Here's the article, read the article and, uh, start giving me some ideas and you'll see people go every one of their ideas is like, like let's say this is for the New York Times right op-ed piece that has a certain tone to it as an editorial piece that's a certain world 
and these people will draw dragons and castles and and people sword fighting you're like what the hell's this got to do with this and it's like oh you just like painting that kind of crap all the time you like painting this fantasy stuff all the time and you can't get your head out of it and and think broader just to the idea does that make sense yeah um you know you're start. i always say the same thing it's like your drawing skills your painting skills your graphic design skills whatever the skills are that you need to do whatever it is you want to do like for me drawing let's say drawing drawing to me now is always in service to design you know what i mean even if i'm just drawing for myself i want to sit there and play with caricature and styling and you know shape and i'm just always putting it in service to design and especially if i'm doing an illustration or a painting or something like that the drawing and all that stuff becomes in service to the idea does that make sense yeah but you got to have that strong and i know it's a cliche but you got to have that strong foundation to build anything on otherwise you, you just you've got such holes in your knowledge that it's just going to be a problem you know yeah and I've inherited people that are really good, uh, but like didn't go to college or anything. So they weren't like formally trained. They learned on the job and they were really good. But as a, as a manager of those people, I would always find, I would always at some point go, there's the hole in your skill set. Now I found it. And that hole is in your skill set because you weren't properly trained. Does that make sense? Yeah. Makes and sense. So there'd be a big hole in your skill set. And also not always. I mean, there's some people that are just monster and they, you know, they learned on the job. But, um, and sometimes I've said this before, sometimes it can just be that your horizons weren't broadened enough. Cause I think that's another thing that college does. Like, you know, I came from a place where I didn't have anybody around me who was doing anything like this or understood anything about art. And then when I went to Fullerton and took an art history class, which I had to take, it blew my mind. Like it just opened my mind up to all this stuff and just like taking cultural anthropology opened my mind up to all this stuff and all that stuff feeds into your brain as a designer, I think. I think everything feeds into your brain as a designer. But part of your, your going to college to me isn't just your, your fundamental skill set. It's broadening your horizons and how you look at the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was 1,000% a different person when I exited my college career than when I entered it. I was a 1,000 times different person, totally different person. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay, any other questions on this? Um. I think I think that should be it. I just need to continue the process. <laughs> yeah, and I'm and, and you're getting this. You're all get, you're getting this, which is my main thing here. Okay, I'm not gonna. If this was an illustration class, I'd be grading all these on a whole different thing. This, I'm mostly worried about the skill set or the understanding of the tools we're using. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. I might cool off that building. I mean, that's up to you. I don't want to tell you what to do. Okay. Thank you. I mean, because you guys sometimes, like, even if you don't have a lot of color knowledge, you might take a weird path and you kind of go, that's kind of cool, you know? I wouldn't think of that because, you know, sometimes my brain's too locked into to, uh, color theory or whatever, you know? And sometimes I actually want to get that out of my head sometimes, you know what I mean? And maybe try something totally different. Mm -hmm. Paige, and where are you at? I'm here. I like it a lot better. It looks prettier. Okay, good. Yeah. So you got this pinkish cast, which is uh -huh. fine. So on one thing, you know, well, I'm, I, and uh, sometimes I'll go, okay, that's kind of been interesting. I might start it with going, okay, it's going to cast that light around, and I might kind of start there. But I'm also thinking, like, are these rocks brownish? Are they like granite? You know, are they? They're not usually granted on the beach, but so what? This beach is my beach, so I don't care. But, um, you know, so then I start thinking about how that's gonna work and I might go and look at um, uh, 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 cliffs on a, a pinkish sunset. Mm -hmm. Or I might just look at pinkish sunset, pinkish sunset on rocks. But, you know, just to get an idea of what happens when that, when that light falls across everything. And I'm not gonna get all weird about it. I'm just gonna kinda go, oh, that's what happens. Just as an overall thing and then go, Oh, it casts light over the whole thing, and then the highlights are this color. Okay, that's where I want to start. Like, just something like that, right? The, that uh, uh, library building tends to look kind of ochre-ish. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be. It could be whatever you want. Because I'm saying this has existed, I don't know, a thousand years ago somewhere else. So it could be whatever. It could have had a, a, a long life of being painted different colors throughout its history or whatever. 
-hmm. And part of the reason this popped into my head is because you guys don't remember, but that area where the uh, library is used to be this kind of mishmash of buildings when I was there and the library was over by where the cafeteria is. And then I used to go and talk every now and then at the school. And I don't know, at some point, you know, when I wasn't teaching there, I was just working. Um, at some point I went there and all of a sudden that library is there and I go, how the hell did they build this thing? You know what I mean? So then I kind of thought, well, it just sort of appeared here and then that's where this thing came from. But, um, and I like to use demos just to play, you know? All right, Professor, yeah. do, you think, do you think it would be weird if that, that most back dark purple was the color of the rocks? Uh, I, I would try it. I would just put a layer. Because mm -hmm. like I said, I'm not going to gauge you guys like I would in illustration class or whatever, my Saturday class. No, 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 that wouldn't happen. I mean, that's a fundamental thing where I want to go. That wouldn't happen. But mm -hmm. I can justify a lot of things in a fantasy environment by going, oh, well, you know, I, and I do it all the time. I always want to kind of justify my stuff. And sometimes I just throw something down. And I go, why does that look so cool? It doesn't make sense. And then I kind of think about it and go, oh, that could happen because of this. I, I don't know why, but I want to always justify it in my mind. And maybe that's from working where if somebody said, What's with that? How come that's got a pain? You know, I want to be able to explain it if I'm defending my work in a presentation or something, right? So maybe that's where that came from. Um, you could take some of this, just do another color layer, sample it. And then go, okay, is that screaming too much? And if it is, Then, you know, maybe I come here and go, okay, what if I desaturate it? Oh. Uh, okay. It's still, now it's feeling a little rocky because it's getting a little grayer, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe I go, maybe it's not that color. Maybe it's, mm. you know, what integrates into this environment? That kind of purple right there, which feels like it's reflecting a little more of this brighter light, mm -hmm. kind of works a little bit, but I'd still probably have to, knock it down a little bit because you know the reality of like if you look at a cliffside on a beach they're just eroding all the time and they're and they're basically just dirt you know and some rocks cropping out of them and that's mostly what they are right like sandy colors um I, I, now if you go down towards big sur i think it's different because that's sort of where the forest runs down to the beach which is really unusual so it's probably got bigger rock outcroppings and it's probably a little more, um, not like a, whatever you call it, Huntington Cliffs, right? Huntington Cliffs is just sort of a um, sandy uh, cliffs, hang on. So look, here, you know, you look at Big Sur, you're getting all that over here, but you're also getting a lot of foliage up here, a lot of foliage here, right? Which I don't usually see on a beach. Really rocky. Here's that sort of sandy beach thing, but you get these uh, trees up here that you don't normally go on the beach. But anyway, you get all these different, um, it's a different coastal environment. So if I wanted to get a little more kind of warm that is in the foreground, isn't that cool? Um. Look at that little pop of foliage there. Um, and I also always love this kind of thing where the, the, the cliffs kind of wrap around and then you catch this curve going out. It gives you an instant foreground element. Uh, you know, so on and so forth. The, the water foams up as it hits that edge right there and then the foam goes up, then wet beach, then dry sand. That's how it always works, right? Uh, and that wet sand can get some really interesting colors. Sometimes it'll really reflect the sky, right? I can't get, I'm getting too far into painting. Um, but I, I don't think it's just about painting. I think when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm, uh, it's color theory and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's like, in, you know, because if you're, if, you're, if you're a graphic designer and somebody said, and we're gonna talk about this actually in a minute, when somebody go, and they're gonna do this a lot to you. They're, they're gonna go, hey, we wanna do, whatever it is they wanna do. And they go, here's all the photography assets. And you're gonna look at it and go, holy crap, this photography is awful. You know what I mean? This is terrible. And you're gonna use a lot of this stuff that we're using in painting. Again, these tools aren't just for painting. And you're gonna to have to fix those photos and make them look professional. 
right? From real, that kind of like what we did with the camera exercise early on. You guys remember that? Remember the camera thing? Mm -hmm. That's yes. what we were doing, right? We're taking a horrible photo and trying to make it look decent. And sometimes it's just a raw photo of a, uh, let's say of a product that's not a bad shot, but it really needs to be plus, which almost every photo gets plus like crazy, right? Um, especially product and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you might be going, they might be going, hey, we want this photo of whoever, but we want them, uh, you know, with a sunsetty desert behind them. And now you're going to have to start thinking about how do I adjust this lighting, which is nothing, it's the same thing as what we're talking about here. Like, oh, I'm going to need to splash a little of that lighting on the side of their face and make it look like, and if you do your job right, nobody ever knows you did it, right? They just think it was a great photo that was taken out in the desert. Does that make sense? And it could be anything. I mean, I've gotten so much crappy materials from companies that I, you know, that I have to spend all this time on. And I wasn't a graphic designer for most of my career or anything. But you still get assets in all these different um, uh, ways, you know. I got really bad reference from Pixar for the uh, WALL-E movie, which now I know a lot of ways that I could have en enhanced that. And it wasn't that I was going to use it for anything. It was my own reference. But it was really bad. They were deliberately giving me bad stuff because it was two years out before the movie came out. They're all weird about keeping it quiet. But I could have enhanced that stuff a little bit so it would have helped me a little more. Does that make sense? So, I mean, that's a different thing where I'm not, I'm not using that photography. That photography is from my own reference so I can start to design things. And it was horrible. Reference. They gave me one picture of Wally, I think, one picture of Eve maybe. I mean, and, you know, and at that point... I, I hadn't done a screening yet. And then they finally they gave me a screening of the movie and all that stuff. And then I start to understand it, blah, blah, blah. But I had, you know, all along the way, you're tweaking uh, stuff all the time to make it work for whatever it is you're doing. Okay. Okay. So let's get rid of that. But yeah, I think you're doing the right thing. Just play. Okay. Okay. Because once you put on another layer, who cares, right? right? That's the beauty of it. You don't have to worry about wrecking it. All right, who else? Where's Victor? Victor here? I see you there. I'm here. Can you hear me? Um, I like this. I just think it's getting dark. Yeah? You're dark. Yeah, I just go lighter on it. That's where I don't know which one's covering it. Let's see. Get this one. Yeah, I'd probably just pull this back a little bit. Like maybe, you know, you still want to look like night. Like maybe start there. Right? Okay. And when you light stuff in this environment, this dark environment, boys are going to light up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so I just might, and you already have started it. I'd start to establish my lighting. You know, I always like to go, you know, where can I light a few things up? Well, I like to put fog in it. Yeah, I like that. Um, you know, I might take some of this, or maybe this is cool. Some kind of cool lighting. I don't know. Oops, too big. Yeah, maybe there's cool lighting back here. You want it to be warm. You know, and I could keep the warm lighting up here or whatever, um, or I could go. Light that up a little bit. And I got an excuse to put some light out here, so on and so forth, right? But you can see, I'm not, you're not going to have to do that much in there. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. You're not going to do that much in there. You got a good start on it. Okay, tomorrow is going to be the last day I want to talk about these. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. 
Because I think that I gave you enough time on it's fine. Sorry, Ian, where are you at? Right here. Also, uh, I talked. Has has Frank called? You? I talked to Frank yesterday. Okay. Okay. And what do you say? I, to I told him to get back to you as fast as he can. Um. Because uh, I think that you seem to be very uh, on top of your uh, your plan. Yeah, I, I definitely have like what I'm trying to do. Yeah, and, and I really think that's great. And I, I want to make sure that we're reacting to you fast enough, hopefully. Um, I looked at San Francisco's industrial program. I got to look further into it because their website tells you nothing. Yeah, it's really shit. And also when you try to talk to them, they're not very responsive. Um, okay. That's not but, good. But yeah, but I had someone that went through, um, went through it and they spoke very highly of it um and like i said i think like one of the biggest reasons i'm really trying to do it though especially is because um that one of my um other friends who's doing industrial design is going to be going into it at around the same time yeah i get that and but okay so there, now the only one or two pictures i could find in there of some student doing a presentation or something right yeah there's a lot of videos they have a youtube channel with like stuff oh, okay. on there i'll look at yeah, that yeah, you check that out. There's definitely not like a lot. It's definitely not like an empty program. Like it's just like a name and nothing there, but it isn't like interactive, like in the way that like I went on art center's website and like, I looked through all their stuff on there. Like it's a much better website. It gives you a much better idea of it all. But um, it definitely seems like a, like a, a program with a lab and everything too. Like I um, went to the school and like saw that stuff at, at one point. Um, Was there a lot of ID sketches and things like that? Um, well, I went when it was COVID, so I went and saw the building and looked inside the, but I didn't, you know, like, see everything. but, uh, Cause like the pictures I saw, there was someone in the head, like, it almost looked like it was a UI UX sort of presentation. Yeah. Right. Uh, one, thing, one thing you've got to understand that I think is important. I was thinking about this for whatever reason, they've started calling UX UI product design. Okay? Yeah. That's kind of weird. That is not product design. No. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's weird. I didn't know it either until fairly recently. And all of a sudden, I started hearing, because I listened to a lot of podcasts, design podcasts and stuff like that. And yeah. Like really high, I can't remember who it was. It might have been Jessica Hish. It was somebody really high level. Yeah. Like, oh, my boyfriend's or her husband or whatever is a, is a product designer. I go, oh, that's interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. And then she got into the conversation and she was talking about, he does you, or actually, I think he did websites and stuff. So I don't know how this is happening, because I've seen it in a few places yeah. now, where they're starting to call UX UI, website development, all this stuff, you're starting to call it product design. It's like, that is not product design, okay? Yeah, that's And what I worry about is that like, okay, now you've got a, another factor you've got to look at when you're looking at um, uh, a product design program to make sure that that's not what they think it is. Yeah, absolutely. I went through, the, the class list and all that doesn't have any like um, math or computer science related things in that way. But I know obviously like, like I know there's a, there's a class for that Fullerton college and it's just like, uh, it's, it's more like, like logic thinking do like if I press on this thing and I'll open like, it's, you know, it's, it's navigation like, design. It's, yeah. it's, it's interface design. That's what yeah. that is. Yeah, okay? yeah. And it's like, you could say that it's a, uh, okay. So you could say that it's an extension of graphic. It's another area of graphic design you know there's a lot of ways to just talk about that i just look at it as design at this point mm -hmm. the good thing about all that stuff is for you guys is i think it's that's exciting is that there's so many more areas of all this stuff than there was when i started you know yeah, I mean? totally. when i started yeah. graphic design yeah. meant, meant page layout logo design print you know yeah. i mean that's about oh. what it meant you know what I mean? that's maybe that's some it. graphics for newscasts or something like that now yeah. it's just, it's huge, man. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. overlapping all these other things. And, and yeah, a, uh, 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 a product designer, high level product designer, like an art center or whatever. Uh, yeah. They might come out and they're designing, like I told you, they were designing that cockpit for a Boeing plane or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they do have to think about, you know, uh, how you know what's how the nav you know they might be involved with it, what you need they to might see. be involved in the team that does the the interface because totally. the team that does the interface is going these screens need to integrate into the hardware and the things you're pulling and pushing and they need to all integrate together if it's doing it correctly so they're they might pull you in and go what do you think about this and just like when i was head of toy design at disney stores yeah the packaging team would pull me in and go what are you seeing for the packaging for this product you created totally. Because you created it, so we want to have some idea of what you think it should be. Yeah, right? absolutely. You and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't sit there and design it for them. I'd do a couple of ideation sketches, and I'd talk to them about it and go, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this. And here, and I'm going to go, 
super over the top with it and go come back to me with your budget because I know I'm over budget and let me see it and let me see if I can still give, get this much bang for my buck by reducing it because I was better at doing that because I was a product, you know, I was designing hard goods and stuff. So I had a better solution uh, skill set, I think, than they because their skill set was 100% packaging. My skill set was everything from theme parks to keychains. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a wider skill set to solve problems. And again, I wouldn't get too involved with it because they had their own director and I didn't want to step on him. And he was the guy to ask me to do it, by the way. But yeah. um, anyway, uh, you know, so anyway, overlap, overlap, overlap. And I see product design as a very overlappy medium or a very overlappy uh, discipline, right? I do see That's why I you know, interfacing with so many people. Absolutely. In, you know, engineering, uh, manufacturing, production. All uh, of it. Uh, graphics, packaging, uh, trends. Demo, you know, it's a valuable skill set because of all that, I think. It's too. awesome. Yeah. It's awesome because you really get to use your all your full brain power as a designer. Yeah, know? for sure. Definitely. You know, because they're just throwing curveballs at you all the time and go, solve that, solve that, solve that, you know? Hey, yeah, you just definitely. lost two bucks off the budget, solve that, you know? Totally, yeah. And I love that, you know? Yeah, definitely. All right, so you have these two blocked into a warm and cool, which I don't think is a bad idea. I might push this a little cooler. Mm-hmm. You know? up here now you know just because it's going back into that atmosphere yeah i mostly was trying to just block out my colors with this yeah, I, I totally agree with that yeah so i might come over here and just get this a little bluer maybe desaturate it mm, yeah and then you know then i can do my my pop of a warm you know You know, maybe light up my windows. Yeah. I need a new layer. Light up my windows up here. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and I probably I probably knock down the saturation of these red tiles. I mean, it just depends on what's going on in that environment, right? Yeah, for sure. I just mostly wanted to get everything. Um, mostly yeah, and, the- by the way, I, I, I like, I like, I try and do this where I just go, if it is a warm, cool, whatever it is. Warm, cool, purple, blue, whatever my scheme is, I just go bang and I knock them just like you're doing right there to try and get them to separate. Yeah, and then sure. just sort of drive me and go, okay, I know what the big picture is here. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I think like the the thing that I'm uh, like thinking about most when I'm coming at this the next time is the ship and how, how I'm going to color in the, um, the posts and all that right there and kind of like keep that separated from the rocks in the background. Yeah, see- yeah. Okay, so what I had to do is I lit it all up you know, where it was all warmish. Mm-hmm. And then I had to go in and I can you know, and then I put, uh, I put all that cool behind it. So I had that cool behind all the warmth. And then I had to go in and so it's in the video and I had to go in and sort of put the rigging back in and then sort of paint in between the rigging. Cause I like to carve the shapes out. So I had the blue surrounding all that warmth. So it popped a little yeah, bit. Definitely. Right? Yeah. So it's, it, it's, uh, but I'm also oh, working it. Yeah, fairly just... loose. What's that? Yeah. I'll work at it. Yeah, that's just what I'm thinking about, like going into it next time. Yeah. But, uh, that's why I left that area kind of open too. So what I want to see in that program, by the way, is I want to find out what their ideation uh, viscom thing is, and and how much prototyping are they doing? Right? Yeah, I will send you. I will send you the um, like the class list of what it says. All the classes, like okay, yeah. Obviously, it doesn't give a great insight into it, but it gives you kind of an idea. Um, because I obviously I want your input with it as well. Um, and then with like next semester and everything, I think the biggest thing that, um, right now I'm focused on though, is, um, those two classes, like kind of what it looks like, especially with the, the online like aspect and not like meeting in zoom, like, cause we have a meeting time. Those like two drafting classes don't have a meeting time. So I, I feel like they be... don't have a meeting time. What does that mean? That's like when you sign up for the class, it doesn't say like, Oh, you meet from nine to 11, right? It just has online, like class online. I don't understand that. Like, don't upload videos, and then you'll upload something, but there's not a, it from how I'm seeing it. So they're it, not doing this? No. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know. That, dude. Like, what does that mean? Like, what, I don't know what that means. Like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you be in, in the room? Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, that's what I don't know. And then if I'm not, if, if, if that is really what it is, and because of just that aspect of the learning, it won't really be what I'm trying to get out of it. What would be more beneficial in this time in between to take? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I got a couple ideas on that. Let me talk to you about that a little later. Yeah, for sure. Because I'm still digging into what their program is there. Yeah, uh, definitely. And I think that, like, uh, you know, but when it's, you talk it's, about, it's like, sorry. When you talk about product I'm, design, you got to have prototyping skills, ideation skills. You have to have, I was thinking about this, and I've always thought about this. Yeah. One of the fundamental things that probably allowed me to stay employed and all that kind of stuff was my sketch, my sketching set, skill set and my idea skill set. Because the first part of any project, you're just sitting there whipping out uh, ideation sketches, you know, to, to start rolling through ideas and, and solutions and all that. Yeah. You don't have that as a product designer. You're in big trouble. Because yeah. uh, I got news for you. Everybody coming to our team is going to kick you out of every job you go after. And, and, <laughs> and probably uh, uh, coming out of Long Beach State, because I think they have a pretty good product program. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, RISD and, you know, uh, Center for Creative Studies, you know, the big three are Art Center, RISD, and Center for Creative Studies in, I think that's what it's called, in Detroit. Uh, you should look at them, by the way. And, yeah. Uh, they're a big, those are the three big kind of industrial powerhouses, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Art Center probably being one. Yeah. And then, I don't know, Creative Center, the one in Detroit might be two. And then maybe RISD's three, maybe. Yeah, I want to send you... Um, just and, and, and Academy of Art in Frisco also has a product design program. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I saw that. Just, um, just, just um, I don't want to obviously get too in-depth with it, but just, uh, I want to send you this YouTuber when you, um, who like did industrial design at Long Beach State. And like, I think like the, it's a pretty similar idea. And he kind of talks about a lot of what it looks like there and um, what he got out of it. And then like what he uses now, you know what I mean? Um, and I'll send those over to you after this. Yeah, I had a guy that worked for me. I had two guys, I think, that came out of there. They were pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they're very good at uh, prototyping and very good at kind of bashing prototypes together. They were very good at execution of, uh, of those ideas sort of in an ideation phase. They were very good at product sketching. Uh, and I don't expect, uh, you know, I, I, they were good. You know, and yeah, they came up with really interesting solutions for pretty complex problems. Uh, I thought they were good, you know, and they both, I think they both came out of, I think I've worked with like at least four people at Disney who were out of uh, Long Beach and I thought their skills were pretty good. And they did really good quick, um, like foam core Massey models and foam core solution yeah, models good. and things like that. Really fast and really good. They were really good at that. Um, and their drawing skill set was pretty good. You know, they could, they could sketch, you know, fine, you know, and then people, you know, like sometimes somebody would, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this and I'll shut up. Yep. You know, somebody, sometimes somebody for whatever, like the manager at work for me would delegate to them. I don't know, something to do with the princess line or something like that. And, and they don't do that. That's not what they do. They're not, they can't draw characters. They can't draw people, but that's not their skill set. And it's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was more absolutely. about the manager making a poor decision. Cause I go, why are you handing an industrial designer? A character art job don't do that yeah. you know what i mean i go there they're never going to succeed at that you know totally. um, who's this okay and we'll talk more about that yeah who's this one that one's mine where are you at where oh nathan yeah make sure you're putting your name on these things yeah i completely forgot um i think it's looking pretty good what do you think uh i think um the water maybe needs some texture or something. And the maybe the uh, boat colors. I think the first thing I would do is maybe just, and I know it's connected to something else. I might come in here and just, you know, find the right color and saturate it a little more. Or maybe shift it to a little more aqua maybe. And maybe like a little more, a little bit, a little bit of this up here but I might push it a little more aqua sea green or whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah. But, uh, and then back here, it's getting really tealy. I think if you smudge that out, cause there's, it could work. It could work, but you got to give me some justification, a little bit of justification for that greenish thing. Right. Yeah. It's too different. Yeah. Almost. I was looking, uh, cause I'm going to talk about this brush thing. I don't know if I got this in my, Apple sucks, so they don't update. Yeah, I do have it. Hang on. I'll talk about this more when I get into this. For whatever reason, on my in or uh, YouTube this morning, uh, 
like YouTube, if you ever type, like I probably typed in looking up some musician or something. And now they just flood my, um, my uh, suggestion feed or whatever with all this like classic rock shit. And I don't like classic rock, but I must have looked up some who well, whatever. And anyway, so this one of Keith Richards popped up and it'll, it'll come into this sort of what we're talking about here. And I, I screen grabbed it because there's a lot of color bouncing around in his hair. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. But it, it makes sense. You know, like, oh, here, I'll pull it up. Look at all the color bouncing around his hair. You see that? Oh, yeah, it's all blue. Yeah, so it's coming from, and there's a lot of purple in it, too. And then if you look right here, that's very ochre. That's his hair color. Um, you know, they had some kind of blue lighting in there or something, right? It could even be an open window, and it's just a lot of blue light coming in from the window, right? Uh -huh. Hang on, I'm just looking at the... Um... All right. uh, yeah, so just, you know, uh, and you could go with that. I mean, that lighting up here, it doesn't have to be warm lighting inside those windows. It could be a cool light like you got back here. And then maybe you're saying that they light their stuff that way, right? Okay, yeah. What's that? Somebody said something. I'm looking for my window. You guys hear me, right? I can hear you. Okay. Yep. It's not like somebody started to say something, they got cut off. All right, so does that make sense? Uh -huh. So may, I would really try, though, to uh, make sure you're separating it. And it is separating right now. One thing I do like is that this, this, these rocks back here, feel like a lighter, further away version of the color of the rock up here. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like that because they're separating. And they're also separating away from that boat. I can see the different separation between the boat. Part of the reason I left that a little more complicated is I want you guys to solve it. Okay? And you're going to solve it by silhouette, more or less. Okay? Uh -huh. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? I'm probably going to put a, a, a I'm going to put two assignments up. I'll put up the one that we already did for planet and I just have to grade it. So don't worry about that. And then I'll put up the one for this one for tomorrow. And I usually have it at uh, about midnight, 1159. So you'll, we can talk about it and you just finish it out, put it up. Okay. Yeah. So this is due tomorrow, Mike. Yeah, but it, it by midnight. Tomorrow by midnight. Okay. Yeah. Because I like to give you the last day to also talk about it and, and sort of, uh, uh, you know, have a final discussion around it. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's look at something here. And hopefully they haven't changed anything on 2020 because I haven't worked with this in a while. I'm going to start here just with a new file. Now remember our image size lives under image, image size, or you can go option command I and it'll pull this up. I just, I, I knew this is probably at 300 and I don't think I need 300. Actually, I'll just leave it at 300. And I'm gonna start this real simple, hopefully. So what we're gonna talk about here, and you can use it on this uh, one you're working on. I'm gonna open a couple of things here. Let me go back to our lion. I want to use this environment. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab. I've got a new layer. I'm going to grab. This mixer brush. Okay, so let's talk about this real quick. Well, let's do this first. I'm just going to grab some ugly colors here. So let's grab this. Okay. I'm going to talk about this a little more as I move along. But I'm going to put 
color here. Actually, I'm going to put a color under this too. Let's do this. I'm going to fill this layer under here with another ugly color or just a loud color. Okay. That's probably too loud. Hang on. So I'm going to knock that down a little bit so it's not screaming at me. And then I'm going to grab, I'm going to go into the layer above it. Oops, I don't want that there. I want this down here. And I'm going to grab another color. Now I'm going to grab this. Now I'll just grab red. Uh, okay. And now I've got this on my mixer brush. We're understanding that, right? Okay. So right here where that swatch is, you notice now there's this swatch over here. So you have a couple of controls here. And again, I think, and I shouldn't say this because then I'm, Okay, we have 14 in here now. How is that possible? Hang on, I'm doing a screen grab. Because somebody's in here. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. So here we are. All right. Okay, so if I drop this down right here. See how it says load solid colors only? Everybody sees that? For the purposes of what we're doing right now, because I'll talk about other stuff tomorrow about this, because I, I, I think this tool is kind of a complex tool a little bit. Not once you get to use it, it's not. But um, so for today, I just want to concentrate on use load solid colors only. Okay, then you have two um, buttons here. One is saying don't load the brush, and one is saying load the brush. Okay, then you have wet, which is, okay, what this is emulating is basically a wet into wet painting. So if I'm painting an oil and my whole, I've been painting and my whole surface is wet, when I paint back into it, I, obviously I'm gonna move paint around underneath it and paint's gonna mix in with what I'm doing. Does that all make sense? Yeah, okay. So it, that's kind of what it's doing, which is a really, really handy thing to be able to do. So this, uh, so all these things are talking about, basically about painting, right? Uh, although again, you can use it for all sorts of things. So this where it says wet is basically just how wet is my brush? Do I just have a lot of pigment on it with no, uh, uh, let's say it's watercolor, with no water in it? Just how wet is my brush, okay? The load is how much paint do I have on there? The mix is how much it's mixing with the other colors, okay? Flow is how fast it's flowing off my brush. So if I have very thick paint with very little uh, liquid in it, as I drag the brush, it will run out. Does that make sense? The brush will just run out of paint. Does that make sense? Or if I have a very wet brush, I'll be able to drag that paint around for quite a while before it runs out of paint, okay? So that's your flow, right? And this other stuff's just stock stuff. And then right here, it says sample all layers. Again, that's gonna make it behave like it's a wet canvas and it's picking up layers and affecting all the layers below it. Now, if I don't want it to affect the layer, I think you can just turn the eyeball off and the layers you don't wanna affect. Or if you just wanna affect the layer you're on, just turn off sample all layers. I'm gonna put it on right now. And then I'm gonna take this brush, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, it's, it's loaded with paint. Let's put it there. And it's, let's just see what we got here. Okay, so you can see already it's picking up the green from underneath. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go, and it's really slow. Sometimes it's really slow. And let's do this. Is your DPI too high? Yes. Actually, I'm going to lower it. Let's see if I can do it. That always happens to me when I try and make a 300. Yep. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't know it was, but I was hoping sometimes I just like to keep it. That's no, it's, it's great to have it at 300, but it always slows down. Well, for this, I really don't need it. I'm just trying to make sure that when you guys have the Zoom video after this, that it's not totally you know screwed. This looks fine. Yeah, so it's a lot better. Look, see how I'm mixing those, those things together a little bit? 
Does that make sense? Yeah? It's yeah. picking up the canvas under, or the color underneath, okay? Now, let's go, let's introduce purple here. Now, I can mix a swatch with this too, by the way. Now, here's what's tricky about it. Now, here's our mix. So let's put the mix at 100. And if you notice, it's not hardly putting any, any of the purple in that. Does that make sense? Okay. So what it's almost doing, basically, it kind of is. What it's actually doing right now is acting more like a smudge brush. Now, here's the thing. With the mix, you would think, now let's put this mix down to 100, or down to zero, or almost zero. You see how now, now it's introducing way more of the uh, purple into that, can you see that? So that's your mix of paint, which you have to remember, you would think, oh, I want more color to mix into it. I'm gonna go to 100%. No, it's lower you put, the more mix you get, higher you put, the less mix you get. I have no idea why they did it like that. I think it's totally stupid, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Because the trick with this brush is you'll, you'll, you don't know that, and then you're going, this thing doesn't do anything. You know what I mean? Like, this, this brush doesn't do anything. Uh, because you don't know that it's just stupid the way that kind of stuff to me is silly. But um, let's see if we can pull the... Okay, so now we have, yeah. Let's get rid of this stuff. Oh, I have it on the wrong layer. So let's refill this layer. It doesn't matter what color it is. Okay, so let's go. Let's get another color. Let's get this color. Okay. So our mix is pretty heavy there. Let's go up and drop it down, which makes no sense. And you can see it's mixing much less color in there. Does that make sense? You can hopefully see the value of this because now I can start mixing color like paint, right? I can pull them together and I can start to get, you know, different colors and all that. <coughs> so here's my load is at 100%. Let's go down. Let's make it less wet paint. Go back up on this. Okay, so is that making sense how I'm controlling this? So let's do this. Let's go push the paint load up. Wet, really wet paint. It flows at 100. Probably want more mix. There, now we got more of a mix. Let's see if we can put this flow down to eight. Okay, do you see how my brush put down paint and then it dries off? You see that? I'm gonna put a harder flow on here. And I can, you know, I'm getting a longer, little longer paint time with it, hang on. So that's at 45, let's put it way down. There you go. See that's dragging off my brush very quickly. That makes sense? Now, let's, and then here under custom, you have, let's put, they get different mixes. So this could be very wet, uh, dry heavy load of paint, um, wet heavy mix. And now I got the flow down so far, it's not doing anything. See, this is what it does sometimes. It does weird stuff like this. Yeah, this is one of my favorite brush types, but it's also the most complicated. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, one little thing screws everything up. 
So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to change this back to, see, this is what it's been doing lately. I noticed lately is that it's not jumping back to um, loading the brush. So let's go to load solid colors only. Okay, it's finally picked. And then it flows up and mixes, and that might be it. That's it. Okay, so my mix was up at 100 because my brain goes, I want more paint, and I put it at 100. No, it's backwards, right? So here we are. Okay, that's good because you have to solve those problems yourself. Okay, and then the flow is how much flow do you want? I, that's a much less flow. Um, does that all make sense, you guys? Okay. So let's look at something real quick here. So for now, I'll just leave it on custom field. Also, by the way, if I go here, I'm telling it to use a clean brush, okay? So now when I come in here, all it's going to really do is act like a mixing tool, almost like a blending tool. Does that make sense? So it's either here where it's like you don't have anything on the brush, so it's transparent, or here where it's now loaded and just stay on load solid colors only for now, okay? And it flows way down again. And then mix it. There it goes. Okay, so it's fine. Okay, does that all make sense? Questions? Okay, so I have these two things here. So we're just going to use our uh, line again. We're going to go uh, object selection tool, whatever it's called. Object selection tool. I want to use the lasso right there. And I'm just going to grab this guy. Now, it's not going to separate him perfectly because he's just got too much fur and everything on these edges. But I'm going to go with Command C, copy it, Command V. Now I've got him here, very hard edges. And I'm going to drop this environment behind him. Oops. Okay, so now we have this. He's not in the desert or wherever he lives anymore. And I'm going to go, because I think I can just do it this way. I'm going to put a new layer on here. I've got my, um, let's do another thing. Let's go here, new. And I'm just going to go. I'm going to get a regular brush. I'm just going to make a quick little. See how this works. Who knows? Maybe good, maybe not. Edit. Define brush preset. Uh, L I O. That'll probably work good enough. Okay, so now I'm on a different layer. I'm not on my lion layer. Why am I doing that? Preserve the image. Uh, Non-destructive, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's go to a, back to our color or mixer brush. Go back to that brush I just created. Certain brushes are not gonna let you do this. I think it's because they're already assigned to a bunch of tool sets, but a lot of brushes will. And now I got I'm going to put this just on, so we got it on load colors, but I'm going to tell it, I want it transparent. I'm telling it to sample all layers. And I'm going to, now look, we've got this very hard edge right there, right? And up here, I probably come in here with an eraser first, by the way, and come in here and get rid of some of this. And I can be pretty sloppy with it because I'm going to work on it anyway. Yeah, just here and there, maybe even a little here. That's too gnarly a brush, but whatever. Okay, so I could come in here now, hopefully. On my top layer, let's see what we got here. Yep, 
Yeah. So this little brush, I can start to get little hairs pulling out of here, a little bit of this fur. So it's not feeling so, um, whatever you call that, hard edged where it's been cut out. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm doing that. Probably come up here and do a little up here. You know, and I'd be very finessy with this. I wouldn't do the same thing everywhere and all that. But it's not too bad. That's a little too much right there. But I'm gonna go a little too much on here just so we're making our point. A little here, just pull it out. Only where it needs help. I might even do a little right there. It's too much, but that's okay. And he's already starting to feel a little better. This usually will come out more like that. And I want to make sure it doesn't get uniform or too fuzzy or whatever. Does that make sense? Okay, so now let's go. Now we've turned off our uh, load the brush thing. Let's turn it back on. And let's sample this green back here. So there it is. Okay, so I'm going to take the same brush and go a little bigger. And let's see. Our mix is a lot. Let's see. No, that's not too bad. That's weird. It should be more. Let's go wet heavy mix. Let's see what that does. Oh, that actually goes the opposite. See, that's what's weird about this brush. So I'm just going to go back to, let's try this one. Yeah, look how much that is now. That's on dry, heavy load, okay? I don't want that much. So what I wanna do here, this lion is lit because he was lit in the desert, okay? So now I got, let's go back up to custom. Let's see what we got here, man. Okay, now I got a lot. So let's put our mix. There's a reason. Oh, okay, so I'm not getting the mix uh, thing because the wet is at zero. So let's pull that up and see what we get. Okay, that's not too bad. And then our mix is at zero, which is weird because that should be the least of our mix, but I'm gonna put it back down again right, right there. And then my flow's fine, and I think that's okay. Because what I wanna do here is now go, maybe I'll come in here, and I'm really subtly tinting it a little bit with some of that green that's floating around this environment. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. So now, and I'm doing it very subtly because I don't want to get all hand fisted with it. Let's push this mix down, which means we have more, right? And you know, maybe we put a little there. Oops. Maybe a little here on his nose. You know, I wouldn't go that crazy with it because basically, you know, maybe a little bit in the, in the lighter values. I can really make that statement a little bit. Maybe coming from here, I could maybe, I don't know if I can pull this in or not. Yeah, I can. A little bit of the sky color back here, maybe. And I can start to get him lit a little more in this environment. Now I'm sampling this other color and I'm starting to mix things together a little bit to make sure that I'm not just getting this really ham-fisted uh, thing. I'm gonna sample a little more of this side of his own color and paint over this green a little bit so it's not too much. I don't want it too much. And I have to strike this balance with it. You know, a little bit of that back in there. And it's all on that layer, okay? It's on its own layer, so if I go, I hate this, or if the art director goes, I hate that, you go, okay, cool, you try something else. Does that all make sense? Okay, now you can see the value of this and what you're doing right now. You might get towards, you know, certain parts of it where you go, I just wanna, mix those colors together like an, uh, like an oil painting on your um, ship or the library and, and you can start mixing like you know real paint okay because this thing was designed to sort of emulate wet paint does that make sense 
And I don't know, it's probably me. When I first started using this tool, I'm like, what the hell is this? And I think one of the main problems with it that screws people up is that makes that the mix going the opposite, where it's like you have the most at the least and the least at the most, blah, blah, blah. Just as long as you remember that, it'll probably be okay. Because I just did it in the last part of this demo. I just, you know, did, I just did that, okay? Um, so anyway, I'd have to mix this and, you know, make it more believable. I'd have to mix more of this color back in. It just get subtle. And I'd probably also look at um, real lines and different kind of lighting and see, you know, so I'm sampling some of the color around this and then I'm, you know, like I like that little green in the shadow there. So that tells me maybe I could do some more of that over here. Sometimes it's nice to show the reflected light in the shadow. You know, and then I could also come in here with my smudge tools. Sort of use both together. You know. And then if I had that on zone layer, the, just the green, because I probably would for those greens in the shadows, I could knock that down a little bit. And that's not bad. That's pretty convincing right there. Okay. And then I could still come in here and maybe go, okay, I'm going to knock some of this back out. And then, you know, back, and then I could also do that just by taking the, the paint load, you know, go back here to no paint and do the same thing with it here with the smudge tool instead. Where I'm just smudging, uh, or I'm just, yeah, I got no paint on here. So it's just acting like a blender, basically. But now it's mixing with the color below, which the mixer, uh, actually, by the way, you guys, I just noticed this. Back to my smudge tool. It has sample all layers on your smudge tool, which I, I don't know how I never knew that. So I'm smudging this now on another layer non-destructively. Okay? That's real handy for your painting right now. If you want to try, you know, some edge stuff, do it on another layer because it has sample all layers. This sample all layers thing you're going to see on a lot of tools, okay? It just means exactly what it says. It's going to affect the layers underneath, okay, and mix them together and stuff. So, you know, you can do this non-destructively too, okay? Now, another thing you could do with this, I had a student one time, um, took an image like this forest back here and just started softening edges and everything. When they got done with it, it looked like an oil painting because they were just mixing colors and softening edges and doing all that, you know, painting into it and all that kind of stuff. Does this start to make sense, you guys? And for some reason, he just feels like he needs to be. Darker to me? Yeah, more like that. That helps a lot. Now he's starting to feel a little more like he's in the environment. Does that make sense? Uh, this, I think this is important for digital painting, obviously. I think this is really important for graphic designers. Um, you're talking about a lot of color correction here, and you're going to get a lot of stuff where you're, you're, you're creating a new environment out of stuff. And there's nothing worse than seeing that stuff and just it looks cut out and you know half ass edges that don't make sense hard edges that don't make sense uh lighting that doesn't make sense like i might even take this further and drop him down let's do it that's too much if i could get him down a little bit i might be able to take a um Make a leaf brush, um, or even like a dappled light pattern brush, and then put some dappled sunlight hitting them from above the trees because that light's going to come down through the trees. But I could just make a cushion brush and go pink, 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 and stab it on there. Does that make sense? Okay, because that's probably what I do. I'd probably give them a little dappled light, and I don't know if there's a brush in here that can do it. Uh, I probably have to make it. We do have some stock brushes in here. Let's see what this is. Yeah. Yeah. 
All my special effects brushes are gone. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe this. So I might be able to take something like this. I don't know. You know, that's not, this isn't working, but let me try this again. Because that's way too bright and it's too. I might be able to make something out of something like this that's looking not what I want, but hang on. I just want to get my point across. Let's just smudge some of this out. And this is not how I would do it, but I would make a custom brush and then I would go maybe take, start with uh, maybe the sky color. You know, and then first thing I would do is try some overlays. See if I can get something that'll blend in there in some way. And I would create like a dappled light. It wouldn't be pat leaves like that. It'd just be those random shapes. Does that make sense? Okay. I don't want to make the whole brush and all that stuff. Because it, it's not going to be leaf shapes. They're actually going to be just sort of those random shapes that come down from the, uh, the foliage top. Okay. And I'd at least play with that. I might do it really subtly, but it might pull them into this environment a little more. Okay. But I'd probably have to, again, I'd either have to just hand paint it, you know, just paint those shapes or um, uh, just create a brush for it, which then it goes into my brush library. Now I have dappled sunlight brush and I can do that stuff like we were looking at with Tommy Kim yesterday where he gets all that beautiful dappled light in there. Okay. Does that all make sense? All right, questions about this? Everybody's understanding this. You gotta get in there and play with this. You can probably play with it on the illustration you're doing because it's non-destructive. If you want, or just do what I'm doing. Like start off, I would just start off with some color swatches like I started taught this talk about and uh, start, you know, just getting used to how things blend and the wet mix and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we're gonna do another thing with it later because uh, it sort of has two, well, probably more than two, but two main functions for me, okay? Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, you can take anything, anything you wanna work on. I like the fur stuff because it just forces you to sort of like start thinking about your edges and if you need to make a brush and, um, uh, lighting and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I'd have to tone it down. I think. Yeah, that's a little better. That's better. You don't want it scream and you want it pretty subtle. Yeah? Okay. Um, all right, so let's try and finish off the uh, uh, library by tomorrow. And then I want you to start playing with this because I need you to be playing with this so we can move into the next half of this part, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and then I want to hear tomorrow, we'll go over the final on the library. I want to hear problems that you're having with this tool, okay? And you might not have any problems with it. When I first started using it, I didn't know how to use it. I just thought, I, I abandoned it. I go, I, it doesn't make sense, I'm gonna screw it. Which was really stupid, by the way. Because um, uh, I think it's a really useful tool, you know? Especially, digital painters especially, okay? No more questions? I have a question, Mike. Yeah. Uh, this pertaining to your fall class, um, the digital drawing class that you teach, mm -hmm. can you talk about what you teach in that? Does it relate to this class at all? Um, what's your major? Uh, animation. Uh, okay, yeah, it does relate to that. Um, it's basically just taking your drawing skills into the digital environment. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So just learning, um, sort of like what we're doing with Photoshop, but we're working in, it's actually less about, um, I mean, we're learning tools in these things, uh, in those classes like that, but it's, it's more, it starts to become very related to obviously drawing, but like line quality, how those tools work. And then, and then we really jump into the tool set for, um, just being smarter at the same thing as what, what we're doing with this, where we're learning all those tools with that, but it's a heavy dose of like using your drawing skill set and all that kind of stuff and going, it's really, you know, you're coming in there with some drawing ability and then we're taking it into that digital environment and looking at all the things, all the extra tools you have in that environment. Does that make sense? Yeah, is it Photoshop or also We use Sketchbook Photoshop Pro? and Sketchbook Pro. Okay. Now we use Sketchbook Pro mostly in the beginning because in the beginning, Sketchbook Pro has a really good um, uh, perspective tool. So you go in there and really get used to that perspective tool. I think that's a really valuable tool. Um, so we go in and kind of start with that, I think, I'd have to look at it, but I think so, uh, and start getting, and make sure that we have that down. Then we usually move into, and we'll use that. I use Sketchbook Pro mostly just for drawing. Uh, and then, you know, I'll export it as a PSD or whatever, and I'll pull it back up into Photoshop. And then in Photoshop, we start, you know, so we'll explore the tools in Sketchbook Pro, and then we'll start exploring the tools in, um, uh, Photoshop. And then we also do some, some of this precise stuff, but I have them build their own shapes and everything. Like I don't hand them something to work from. So we started going from there and you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of drawing and it's a lot of what tools can I use to, um, to expand on my traditional skill set Cause you have a lot of tools obviously in the digital environment that you don't have in the traditional environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's just getting really adept at digital drawing and knowing not just going, like I used to be totally where it's like, I don't care about all that stuff. I just go in, I draw, that's it. And it's like, that's stupid. Like you need to know like, no, 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 you can do this and take that. Just like we're doing in here. Where we're constantly taking something and then, you know, being able to expand on it very rapidly because we're using all these tools in here. You know what I mean? You don't want to limit yourself. You want to be able to get a job done very quickly and all that kind of stuff because that's just what everybody expects. And that's kind of what, to me, what those classes are for. And then, and to me, the big leap is not in, the software really it's learning like how that relates to digital drawing specifically does that make sense yeah sure okay um okay so he's not he's not looking too bad there's still way too much hard edge right there so on and so forth okay and i might even go up here by the way i don't know if this will work at all Let's see if we can take. In between the two layers here, I'm going to see if I can come in here and go and just warm up that sky a little bit. Like that, like that, maybe. You see how that pulls in his gold colors a little more? Okay, because I'm going, okay, I don't want to just keep pushing all the green into him. It might become a little much. He's very golden. He was lit very golden. So then if I put a little bit of gold light up there in the sky, now I got an excuse for that gold to live in the environment. It's actually less work for me, which I'm always into, right? That's kind of interesting. That's a real hint of it. Okay, so all these different solutions, right? Because I just looked at it and I go, well, if I put a little gold in there, I have to do less work. Okay, because then I can justify a lot of the gold light that's on him if there's some gold light in that atmosphere or in that environment. Yeah? Okay. Um, no more questions? By the way, if I want to make this look more fantasy, because it's just starting to, I might come in here and take my smudge tool, put it on saturate, and start to saturate. Let's 
some of this hot green back here. And I could probably put a little bit of golden light in here and start to get a little more, that's too much. You know, start to push the environment, start to push the color a little bit. Um, so on and so forth. <clears throat> All right, so try and play with this tool by tomorrow because I want to know what you're having problems with. And you might not have any problems. Finish off your library one as much as you can. Uh, and we'll go over those tomorrow. And then I'm probably going to go over the second part of this tool. Does that make sense? Okay, you guys. I'll, usual routine. I'll put up all the links after this. And um, I'll see you in the morning. Okay? Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Bye. Bye.